Welcome to another video on the Mega MTR 1i5 rotating machine tester. Uh, this one is going to be about insulation tester accuracy. To help me with that I've got the 5069 calibrator from Time Electronics and all this is is a set of decade resistors, high value resistors, it goes up to uh, 99 gig ohms and it also has a little meter in here so I can measure short circuit current and open circuit volts of the insulation tester. Okay, so set up to carry out a resistance accuracy test on an insulation tester. The insulation tester is wired just to the input of the box over here. I set the control knob of the 5069 to resistance and then that gives me access to all of these decades to set whatever value I want to do. The alternative is to actually move this around and I have a few smaller fixed resistance values in here that I can use as a, a, an alternative to these actual decades. So to give a demonstration of some of the aspects I'm seeing, set this to 900 mega ohms there. I will just set this up to a time test. There we go. And we'll hit the go button. What I've been observing is as the test voltage increases on the insulation tester, you will get closer and closer to the nominal value. So about 880 mega ohms there. Knock him off and I'll fling him around to 500 volts. Press the go button again. And you can immediately see I'm now up to 893 mega ohms there. So you find that happens when you get into the high 100 meg, uh, 1 gig ohms and 10 gig ohms ranges on the decade box. What I will do is I will set this up for a 500 volt test for one minute at 90 giga ohms. And we'll see what value it comes back with. I'll then do the same test using the U1461A. And the other thing to note when you watch this instrument, you'll see now it's actually gone up in 10 giga ohm values. And we'll see, it usually gets up to 80 or 85 giga ohms when I'm doing this, so but it takes it a little while, it's quite slow to respond, and it doesn't move through the insulation values in the same way that you'll see the key site doing. I see the jump there from 70 to 80. So it takes it quite a while to respond. You know, we're three quarters of the way through the test there and it's got up to 80 gigs and it's, it might jump another five, but I doubt it. Okay, that's the finish of the test. 80 gig ohms there for the MTR105. So this is the actual table of the results that you can see here and you can work through these values here. This is purely for the MTR105. So of interest to me, as you look down at this bottom end of the results, you can actually see that 50 volts test voltage. We are out of spec at 8.5 gig ohm reading, it should be at least 9.2. And you can go along here, 100 volts, uh, 20 gig ohms is out of spec. 250 volts, uh, 20 gig ohms is also out of spec. You're just in spec at 30, um, 40 and 50 are out, and so on and so forth. So, at this top end of the resistance reading, the MTR105 appears to be out of spec. I don't know if that's specific to this unit or whether it's a problem with the design of the unit. It'd be interesting if somebody else has an MTR105 if they've actually tested it in this manner, whether they could provide some information as to whether their unit was in spec or not. Moving on to the plot, the plot tells the picture really after one gig ohm on a 50 volt test, you can see the tolerance starts to drop away. And at 70 gig ohms or for a 1000 volt test, you again see the tolerance start to drift away from the nominal values. 
So the other plot I have here is for a comparison to other instruments. This is actually the MTR105, the Keysight unit, a Chavanarnu unit and the Mega MIT420 that I have. And you can see all these other units follow a fairly straight line graph across. Um, you can see 1461 drops away a little bit at the 99 giga ohm test. But the MTR105, you know, 20 gig ohms, you see it's starting to drop away from the rest of the instruments there. But interestingly, the 420-2 does seem to be accurate. It's just this MTR105. Okay, this is the overall accuracy at the 500 volt test voltage. You can see the MTR105, uh, minus 2.8%, minus 0.3% for the 1461A. Chavanagh New is minus 0.236 and the MIT420 0.107 so is actually the most accurate of all the units on across the 500 volt test voltage. So to include the metrohit coil into the equation what I actually do is reduce the test range down to the 3 giga ohm that the metrohit can test up to and you can see here all I've done is given the overall accuracy comparison uh, across this reduced test range you can see actually the MTR105 much more accurate down at the bottom end is more accurate than the uh, MetroHit unit and the Chavanagh New unit not as accurate as the Keysight unit at 0.248% but the MIT420 again comes out on top is more accurate than all four of these units and is actually the cheaper tester of the bunch as well. So the other tests that I can do with the time box is utilizing this little display in here which I can turn this to open circuit volts and I can then uh, hit go button and I will get the reading of the voltage on the display here. Now you do get on this particular instrument the voltage displayed during the test anyway and that's 505 to 504 on this uh, 506 now, still 504 on the tester and I will go through each test voltage and record the readings from here and from the actual insulation tester itself and they're pretty correlated quite well actually and you can see uh, a good factor of the mega is how close it can get to the actual uh, voltage current so for a short circuit current usually instruments of this range are around about one to two milliamps and in the end result table what I'll actually do is put the specification from mega to what it should be so we'll see what happens with a short circuit test um, kick him off and we get again you get the reading down here 1.36 milliamps 1.364 on the calibrator 1.37 1.365 so again, the current reading from this looks to be pretty accurate. Okay, so that's that done. So briefly, the setup to measure the one milliamp load test on an insulation tester. You have the tester set to insulation mode. I have one lead that comes out and goes to the U1461A that I'm going to use as an ammeter and then the other lead from the ammeter comes out and just goes to this resistance decade box that I will set up so for 250 volts that's going to be set to 250 kilo ohms set to DC set to IR mode so if I hit the test button you can see I've got a resistance of 0.26 mega ohms or 250 kilo ohms and there's my 1.0005 milliamps on the instrument. Okay and what I'll actually do is work through all the test voltages on the instrument and changing the decade box to suit. The only difference will come is when I go up to 500 volts and 1 kV this box has a maximum input of 250 volts so I'll then switch to using the time 5069 calibrator unit that has a 500 kilo ohm and one mega ohm resistance values in there for the 500 volt and one kV ranges 
but strangely enough it doesn't have 250 kilo ohm and 50 kilo ohm test resistances so I have to use this for that test anyway and that's the basis for carrying out the one milliamp load test the actual values I've obtained I'll put them in a plot at the end of this and you can look at them for yourself but there is nothing to note from them with regard to this unit with regard to this unit they're also fine as well for the MetraHit coil um, this little fellow here in actual fact the 1000 volt test on this is only rated to put out uh, 500 microamps and not the full 1 milliamp so technically speaking that doesn't meet the IEC standard So this is a test setup for measuring the voltage regulation from the output of the insulation tester. Uh, personally, I just do this at 500 volts. You can pick any test voltage on the instrument you like. Uh, I have a set of fixed resistors. Some of them are in boxes uh, of their own. And some of them I use from the actual 5069 calibrator. Two ways I can actually record the voltage. I can record it off the instrument itself. Uh, a lot of instruments these days do have that facility. If it doesn't have that facility, what I have is a high voltage probe, which is just a big voltage divider. This is a 1000 to 1 voltage divider. I wire that straight across the output of the insulation tester, which is across my test resistor. Then I take this to a instrument that is set to measure DC volts, which will measure the reduced output from the voltage divider. And then I times the value seen on this via the ratio. So I'm on 500 volts there. This is actually through the 30k resistor. Press the go button. And I'm on 421 on here. Uh, the instrument's actually showing 424 on the key site unit there. And if I swap over, you should see it'll jump up to 50 now, yeah, so 505 volts on the instrument. I've actually got 510 shown on the key site. So I'd repeat that for a number of resistor values, and then I can get a plot of how well the voltage is regulated across this instrument. So I put the plot up and the data table of the actual voltage regulation, and you can see the MTR105 starts off down at 421 volts. As soon as you've gone above your 500K, you're up to 505 volts, and it pretty much stays there, 506 is the maximum. That gets out to across the resistance ranges. You see a very similar response from the Keysight unit, actually quite a bit better. You can see from the metric coil, it starts off with a much lower voltage and a much wider span, actually goes up to 511 volts when you're up to the 10 gig ohms. Um, but you can see in comparison to a few of the other instruments, yeah, the worst I get is actually up to 550 volts for the FLIR unit and the Chavanagh new unit as well gets up to 551 volts. So you can see the voltage regulation is actually quite good uh, on both the MTR105 and the U1461A. So I guess it's points time for the insulation accuracy tests. Now third place seems to be relatively easy. I'm going to give that to the MetraHit coil. One of its actual one milliamp load tests is out of the IC spec at a thousand volts. It doesn't have the same range as the other two instruments. And if you default these two instruments back to the range that this has, you find that these are, are more accurate anyway. Um, so yeah, we'll sit just one point with him. Uh, first and second, I think an actual fact based on the overall figures I'm going to give first place and five points to the Keysight unit. It is that little bit more accurate. It passes all the other tests. Uh, they're quite comparable to the actual results that are seen on this one. Um, and I also do tend to like you get a better response from the display on this as its insulation value is increasing or decreasing, whereas this seems to be a much more stepped output that isn't quite as effective as the one you see on the key site unit. So yeah, um, first place five points, second place three points, and third place one point for that. So that wraps up the insulation accuracy testing. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. 
and in the next video on this I'm actually going to go into the installation test functionality because the MTR105 has quite a few more functions that is not seen on either of these two instruments which are interesting for insulation testing purposes.